We're given the matrix A, which is a three by three matrix. We're asked to find the eigenvalues of matrix A and then find the corresponding eigenvectors for each lambda. So to find the eigenvalues of a square matrix A, we need to find the values of lambda that satisfy this equation here, where we have the determinant of the difference of lambda I minus A equals zero, and then to find the eigenvectors of A corresponding to lambda, we need to find the non-zero solutions for this equation here, where we solve this equation for vector x. But again, we'll first find the eigenvalues. So we have the determinant of the difference of, here's lambda times I, where I is the three by three identity matrix, minus the given matrix A equals zero. Performing this matrix subtraction gives us this determinant here, where this determinant must equal zero. So to evaluate this determinant, we'll use expansion by minors of the cofactor method using row one. So starting with the first element in row one, we have lambda times the determinant formed by eliminating row one, column one. So we'd have lambda minus four, 10, zero, and lambda minus four. And we have minus, the next element in row one is three, times a two by two determinant formed by eliminating row one, column two. So we'd have four, 10, zero, lambda minus four, plus the last element in row one is negative five, times the determinant, where the elements are found by eliminating row one, column three. So we have four, lambda minus four, zero, zero, and this determinant must equal zero. And now each two by two determinant is equal to this product minus this product. So here we have lambda times the quantity lambda minus four times lambda minus four. Let's write that as lambda minus four squared minus 10 times zero, that's zero. And we have minus three times four times lambda minus four minus 10 times zero, which is zero. And here we have minus five times zero minus zero. Notice how this would be zero, and these products here contain a common factor of lambda minus four. So if we factor out one factor of lambda minus four from these two products, we'd have lambda minus four times, here we'll have lambda times one factor of lambda minus four, and here we just have minus three times four. Again, we factored one factor of lambda minus four from this product, giving us lambda times lambda minus four, and we factored out lambda minus four from here, leaving us with minus three times four. Let's continue solving this on the next slide. Simplifying inside the brackets, we'd have lambda squared minus four lambda minus 12, and this trinomial does factor, so we have lambda minus four, we'll have two more binomial factors, the factors of lambda squared are lambda and lambda. The factors of negative 12 that add a negative four or negative six and positive two. We have three solutions to this equation, so we have three eigenvalues. Let's list them in order from least to greatest. We can say lambda one equals negative two. Lambda sub two is equal to positive four. And lambda sub three is equal to positive six. And now we need to find the corresponding eigenvectors for each of these eigenvalues. So again, to find the eigenvectors of A corresponding to lambda, we need to find the non-zero solutions to this equation here. So let's find the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two. Again, I've already set some of this up. Here we have the difference of lambda I minus A times vector X equals zero vector. Subtracting these matrices gives us this matrix here. Here are the components of vector x, and here's the zero vector. Now for the next step, we'll substitute negative two for lambda. So we'll have negative two, three, negative five for the first row. The second row will be four, negative six, 10. The third row will be zero, zero, negative six. And now we'll write the corresponding augmented matrix and write it in reduced row echelon form to solve for x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three. So the first row is going to be negative two, three, negative five, zero. 
the second row four, negative six, ten, zero, the third row zero, zero, negative six, zero. Let's continue on the next slide. Let's get a zero in this position here. Notice that two times negative two plus four is zero. Let's replace row two with two times row one plus row two. Let's get a leading entry of one here by replacing row three with negative one-sixth times row three. The first row stays the same. Second row is going to be two times negative two plus four, that's zero. Negative two times three plus negative six is zero. Two times negative five plus 10 is zero. And two times zero plus zero is zero. And the third row is going to be zero, zero, one, zero. Now let's get a zero in this position here by replacing row one with five times row three plus row one. Let's also interchange row two and row three. So five times zero plus negative two is negative two. Five times zero plus three is three. Five times one plus negative five is zero. Five times zero plus zero is zero. Interchanging row two and row three. Now for the last step, let's replace row one with negative one half times row one. So we have a leading entry of one. So the first row would be one, negative three halves, zero, zero. Second row, zero, zero, one, zero. The row is all zeros. So because we have a row of zeros, which is expected, there's an infinite number of eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two. But notice how this first row indicates x sub one minus three halves x sub two equals zero. The second row indicates that x sub three equals zero. So we can say x sub one equals three halves times x sub two and x sub three equals zero. So if we parameterize this with t, we can say the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two must be in the form where the z component must be zero. If we let x sub two be equal to t, we could say the x component would have to be three halves t. Now if we don't want fractions here, we could also perform scalar multiplication and clear the fractions by multiplying by two. Let's go ahead and do that even though it's not needed. We could say the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two are in the form of three t comma two t comma zero, where t can't equal zero because the eigenvector can't be the zero vector. Of course, we could also write this as vector x equals t times the vector with an x component of three, a y component of two, and a z component of zero. And now we need to do the same for lambda sub two and lambda sub three. So as you can see, this is quite a bit of work. For lambda sub two equals positive four, we substitute four for lambda here. So we'd have four, three, negative five, four, zero, ten, zero, zero, zero. Again, let's write the corresponding augmented matrix. So the first row is four, three, negative five, zero. Second row is four, zero, ten, zero. The third row would be zero, 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 zero. Let's write this in reduced row echelon form to solve for x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three. Let's get a zero in this position here by replacing row two with negative one times row one plus row two. So row one and row three stay the same. So we have negative one times four plus four, that's zero. Negative one times three plus zero is negative three. Negative one times five plus 10 is 15 and negative one times zero plus zero is zero. Now let's get a zero in this position here by replacing row one with row one plus row two. And to have a leading entry of one here, let's replace row two with negative one third times row two. So four plus zero is four, three plus negative three is zero, negative five plus 15 is 10, zero plus zero is zero. One third times row two would be zero one 
negative five, zero. And for last step, we need a leading entry of one here. We'll replace row one with one fourth times row one. Row two and row three stay the same. So we'd have one, zero, ten-fourths or five-halves, zero. So this first row indicates x sub one plus five-halves x sub three must equal zero. The second row indicates that x sub two minus five times x sub three must equal zero. So we can also write this as x sub one equals negative five-halves times x sub three and x sub two equals five times x sub three. So we can parameterize this relationship by letting x sub three be equal to t. So the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub two equals four are in the form of, if x sub three is equal to t, then x sub two would be equal to five t, and x sub one would be equal to negative five halves t. But of course, if you do want to clear the fractions here, we could multiply by two and say the eigenvectors are in the form of negative five t comma ten t comma two t. If we want, we could also factor out the t and write this as the eigenvectors in the form of t times the vector with an x component of negative five, a y component of ten, a z component of two, again, where t doesn't equal zero because the eigenvector can't be the zero vector. And now we need to find the eigenvector for lambda sub three equals six. So for lambda sub three equals six, in our matrix equation, this first matrix would be six, three, negative five. The second row would be four, two, ten. The third row would be zero, zero, two. So the corresponding augmented matrix would have a first row of six, three, negative five, zero. Second row would be four, two, ten, zero. Third row would be zero, zero, two, zero. Let's write this in reduced row echelon form on the next slide. Let's get a zero in this position here by replacing row one with two times row one plus row two. Notice how we'd have two times negative five plus ten, which would give us a zero here. Let's also get a zero in this position. Notice how negative five times two plus ten would be zero. Let's replace row two with negative five times row three plus row two. And let's replace row three with one half times row three to get a leading entry of one. So with the first row we have two times six plus four, that's twelve plus four is sixteen. Then we have two times three plus two, that's eight. Two times negative five plus ten is zero and two times zero plus zero is zero. And then we have negative five times row three plus row two. So we'd have four, two, negative five times two plus ten is zero. Negative five times zero plus zero is zero. And one half times row three, we'd have zero, zero, one, zero. Let's get a zero here by replacing row two with negative four times row two plus row one. And let's replace row one with one sixteenth times row one. So the first row would be one, one half, zero, zero. Second row is going to be negative four times four plus sixteen, that's zero. Negative four times two plus eight is zero. The remaining elements would also be zero. And the last row is zero, zero, one, zero. So for our last step, we'll interchange row two and row three. So we have one, one half, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, 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 zero. So the first row indicates that x sub one plus one half x sub two equals zero. Second row indicates that x sub three equals zero. So we can write this as x sub one equals negative one half x sub two and x sub three must equal zero. So if we parameterize the relationship using t, we can say the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub three equals six would have to be in the form where the z component would be zero. And again, if x sub two is equal to t, then x sub one would be negative one half t.
if we did want to clear the fractions, we could multiply this by two and write this as negative t, two t, zero, again where t can't equal zero, or we can factor out the t and write this as the eigenvectors must be in the form of t times the vector with an x component of negative one, a y component of two, and a z component of zero. So the eigenvectors are any scalar multiple of this vector here. We found the three eigenvalues of the square matrix A, and the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals negative two are the vectors in this form here, where t doesn't equal zero. We can also say the eigenspace corresponding to this lambda is given by the span of the vector three comma two comma zero. The eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals four are these vectors, where t doesn't equal zero, and the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals four is given by the span of the vector with components negative five comma ten comma two. The eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals six are the vectors in this form, and the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals six is given by the span of the vector with components negative one comma two comma zero. I hope you found this helpful.